Chase Lee Hockey with the Blue Futon, and this is going to be a movie review, something on Voodoo that you don't know. It says it's in theaters, but on Voodoo, but you really don't know if it actually went to theaters. This is Ghosts of War. This is directed by the person who did Butterfly Effect, which is a movie that our critics hate but users love. But let's see what Ghosts of War is about, and did I like this war movie of ghosts? <laughs> So Ghosts of War, what's it about? Well, this is based in France, Germany during World War II, battling the Nazis of a Germany. So now these American units, what they have to do, this unit has to go to a French house and kind of hold it until the next, you know, unit comes to relieve them from their duties. So they get there, the unit they're about to, you know, that wants to get out of the house. They're like, we're leaving now, get out, get out, get out. And they're like, okay, why are you guys leaving so soon? But... But they're leaving so soon because there's ghosts in the house. Who killed these ghosts? Why are these ghosts haunting these people? And is it what everyone thinks it is? So what did I like about this movie? I actually enjoyed this movie a lot. You can tell this is a very low budget war movie. Just from the very beginning fight sequence of a vehicle blowing up. You're like, okay, this is a low budget. But you kind of get into the mood of it. And this is a warp of different movies in one. This is a war movie and a horror movie as well as a mystery ghost movie. And I actually enjoyed that aspect a lot of not knowing what we're getting into, knowing who these ghosts are, who this house belonged to, what did these Nazis do to these ghosts, what are these American soldiers trying to do to, you know, get these ghosts to stop haunting them and, to, you know, kind of be free. Ghosts be free because they're like, is it ghosts? Is it the house? Is it anything? We don't know what kind of these are. Are they demons? Anything like that. I mean, they go into different aspects, maybe demonic possessions, and they don't really explain that as well. But you kind of understand, not really, you kind of understand, but not really of what they're trying to do with the very twist at the end. So the twist at the end is interesting because you know the twist all of a sudden and you go back into what happened throughout the story. You're like, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That part doesn't make sense, like the demonic possession. You're like, okay, um, I get why they put it in there, but it just doesn't like jive with everything they're trying to do with the different timelines and the stories of what's happening. The twist at the end, though, you're either going to like it or hate it, and are in the middle. I'm kind of straight up in the middle because the last 15 minutes, you're like, that makes sense what they're trying to do. But you understand also the other twist that they're trying to do, and you're like, that makes sense, and they... It makes sense with what they're trying to do with the Morse code and who dies in between each ghost and everything like that and what each action of each doing. Like there's Cradle, uh, that, you know, uh, the string game with the, the string game with the fingers, uh, Cat's Cradle, yes. There's a Cat's Cradle storyline and you get to know these soldiers as well. Each soldier has their own personality and their differences of who they think each person is and what they do. There are different aspects of like a book with German as well as Arabic in it and you kind of go back and forth of all of a sudden this book has German in it all of a sudden this book has absolutely nothing in it then all of a sudden this book has Arabic in it and how does one person actually understanding all three of these languages which I can only two of these languages but how is this person reading a blank book so technically it could be three languages if you want to put it that way but like I said there's a twist at the end where you're like huh interesting 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 overall though i dug this movie as a whole i enjoyed the ghost aspect i enjoyed the twist at the end even though the cgi at the end was also just like eh. there's a lot of cgi elements where you're like oh that doesn't look good at all i feel like with this movie with a little bit more of a budget of you know expanding the universe a little bit more it would have been a vastly better movie and a movie that could have done well in the theater post our pre-pandemic but overall goes to war i recommend it with the strong acting the interesting story that keeps you very much intrigued through the whole hour and 40 minutes of like what is happening we're going through loops who are these characters what's this twist at the end because when it happened do you go oh that's kind of gory but it makes sense and it makes you wonder it does make you wonder of like interesting so do i recommend it yes Ghost of War will receive a 4 out of 5 with futons. It was at 80%. So you see the Creation News scores gave this one. Holy macaroni and cheese. I am the only one that likes it, apparently. 
You have the critics at 38% with 20, 39 of them, and the audience score at 44% with 61 of them. Here's critic consensus. Ghosts of War blend supernatural horror and period war drama to produce a muddling mashup that, provo- provo- blah, 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 that proves some ingredients are better left separated. See, I disagree. I'm one of those people that like to mix and mash different storylines because we're getting the same shit over and over and over and over because we're not doing anything original anymore. We're doing sequels, remakes, sequels, remakes, sequels, remakes, sequels, remakes. Because with everything I'm writing, like I'm writing a comedy that goes straight into like a hardcore action scene as well as a horror movie that's like, you know, supernatural but then switches to like a Saw movie. So I'm doing like stuff like that. You know, you got to mishmash, um, you know, genres. And I think this one did a well, good, a pretty good job. But I just wish the CGI was better. But do you agree with my 80%, the 44, or the 38, Chase Dog and the Blue Bouton? Like, comment, subscribe. One more thing is Bouton Topi, you Boutonians. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace and love. Peace and love. Be nice, people.